Indeed, he has done great things. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord this morning. You can take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, praise and worship. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Indeed, he has done great things. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow, isn't it wonderful to be in church? It is a wonderful thing to be in church. Hallelujah. I want to thank the Lord this morning for he has given us an opportunity to share. He wants to speak to us. And I believe and I pray that at the end of this, the Lord would have spoken something to us that will make us take some action. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to greet my pastor and I want to thank him for allowing me to stand this morning uh, together with Amai. May the Lord continue to use you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. I also greet uh, Pastor Tsusa and Matsusa. May the Lord continue to use you, supporting me to grow. Hallelujah. I greet the church board as well. May the Lord bless you and your families. And everybody who is here this morning, I speak showers of blessings upon you from the Lord. Be greeted in Jesus' name. Amen. The past few weeks... We have been having teachings uh, about pruning, teachings about the raven feeding uh, the man of God, teachings about being shelved. And I don't know what we have learned or what we have picked from all these teachings. But this morning I want to take a, a different direction a little bit that is going to challenge you and me. Uh, I'm going to read my scripture and then we will talk about the challenge that I want us to start. After all this, after being pruned, after being shelved, after being fed by the ravens, what do you need to do? Hallelujah. I'm going to read uh, Luke uh, 10. Uh, Luke 10 uh, from verse 19. I will just read verse 19 actually. Luke 10 verse 19. Luke 10, 19 is the scripture that I'm reading. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Let us pray. Father, I thank you this morning for your word. Your word is sharper than any double-edged sword that cuts to the separation of bone and marrow. As we are sharing in your word this morning, I pray that Lord, you will speak to us, you will rebuke us, you will comfort us, you will encourage us in the way that we need to go in your authority. We thank you. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking about focus this morning. I want to talk about focus. You see, after a man has been pruned, there is something that they were focusing on when they were pruning him. After a man has been fed, there is a focus. There is somewhere where you must go after. Now, when we look at the church, when we look at you and me, all these things have been done. All these things have been said to us. But do we focus on what this word of God is saying? The authority that we have been given. We have been given authority. That is our focus. The authority that the Lord has given us. The church is talking like everyone without authority. The church is behaving like everyone without authority. You know when someone doesn't have authority, they are tossed by any doctrine, anything that is said. But as children of God, we have authority. We got this authority from the sonship from the adoption that he has given us. Now that we have this authority, he says in his word, whatever we say, 
Whatever we bind, whatever we agree, is agreed in heaven. But when we look at what we are doing, because we have lost focus, our focus has gone away from the authority that we have been given. Our focus has gone on things around us. You remember Peter when he was in the boat? He asked Jesus, is that you? And Jesus gave him authority to get out of the boat and walk to him. As long as he was focused on the word that was spoken by Jesus, he walked on water. But when he lost the focus, he started sinking. So when we lose focus, we start sinking. When we lose focus, things start happening in a way that we cannot control. I want us to understand that God, in the beginning, you know, in the book of Genesis, he says, I have commanded you. You know, when something is a command, it's not optional. We are commanded to lay hands on the sick and they must be healed. But how many times have we said the word of God and it has not happened? Have you been there? Where you declare and decree, you bind, you rebuke, you do everything. But after that, nothing. The situation is the same. Why is the situation the same? When I have spoken and the word says I have been given authority. It is our focus. What do you focus on when you go to see a sick person? What do you focus on when you see a nation that is bleeding? What do you do when you see a person who is hurting? Where is your focus? Where is my focus? Are we focusing on the promises of God? Where are we focusing on? You know, when we are born again, just being born again is a change of direction. It's a change of focus. When you change direction, it means you are moving from darkness, you are getting into light. And when you get into this light, you are not supposed to behave like you were behaving in darkness. Your focus must be in your place where you are now. Our focus now must be in the authority that we have been given. God has given us authority to say things that they must become. God has given us authority to lose things and they must be loosed. But our focus is on things around us. Hallelujah. Our focus is like things around us. You know, when, when, when a policeman, when someone is joining the police or the military, they are taken to an academy. And in this academy, they are trying to build a policeman from a civilian. Hallelujah. This man has been living in society as a civilian. Now we want this man to be a policeman. We want to change the focus from civilian to becoming a policeman. So when we take you into the academy, we train you. And in the training, we tell you what you must expect out there. Oh, look here, young man. Look here, young lady. There are thieves out there. There are traffic offenders out there. There are people who are going to do things not according to the law. So the training that the officer is getting is for him to focus on the law that he must make sure it's happening in the community. Now, we are the Christians. We are the police of heaven. We have been taken through training by his word. And his word tells us that there are going to be times when people are going to be proud of themselves. There are going to be times when people would want to hear what their ears are itching to hear. There are times that people will have no love. Why are we being told this? Our training says, whatever we hear, we fight it in prayer. We are spiritual. We are, not, we are not natural. We are supernatural. So when things are being said, you see, when we are seeing COVID, to any other man, 
it's COVID. We must put on masks. We must wash our hands. We must do everything. But don't you think that God is waiting for someone who knows their authority? Could it, you, know, you know when people get out of the academy, the police, it's not everybody who is promoted to become a sergeant. It's only those or the one who goes out to do the unusual. The unusual policeman becomes the sergeant. The unusual sergeant becomes the commander. The unusual commander becomes the brigadier. So we, we want Christians who are unusual. Christians who are going to say, my focus is on the authority that I've been given. This authority does not care where you come from. This authority is not about your height, your size, your complexion, or your background. It is about you belonging to the kingdom of God. You can't be pruned just to stay without bearing fruit. You can't be pruned just to be there and give people the shed. Yes, the shed is good, but pruning needs you to bear fruit. When the widow gives the prophet a food, she wants an overflow. So when we are in this place where we are being taught this word, the word is only seeking a man, a woman who wants to be outstanding. Can I be pruned and remain the same? Can I come out of training? How many people have been trained in their professions here? How many people have been trained? No offense. It looks like everybody has been trained. Are you at the same place that you were when you left college? Hmm? No. No. We are not at the same place that we were when we left college. It's because we understood that after being trained, we must be effective. Hallelujah. But today, our churches, our homes, our families are not showing that we have been trained. I want us to focus on the word of God. For this word, the Bible says, it holds all things together. Everything is held together because of the word. And in Colossians 1.17, he says, he is before all things. And by him, all things consist. So if we have received this Jesus, for his word is his authority in us. We must be seen to be effective in changing the environment. We, we can do it. One of us can do it or we can do it together as long as we are in one accord. As long as we are believing what the word of God says. When the world sees how God is using us. When the world sees what God is doing through us. It's easy. For them to believe in our God. And all this happens because we are focused. Our focus is not on things around us. It is on the authority. You see, when the policeman stands on the road and you are driving your expensive car. Your focus or his focus is not on your car. Their focus is in the authority that they have when they raise their hand. Our focus, it doesn't matter what it is looking like out there. There are wars, there are, you know, storms, there are things that are happening. But our focus should not be on the storms. Our focus should not be on the things that, it must be on the authority of the word of Jesus that we have believed. When you believe this word, believing it from your heart, believing it from my heart, when I speak, things become. And you see, we don't have to speak because they are promising to be. We speak from nothing, like the pastor was preaching last week about faith. You, you speak where there looks like there's no hope. You need to be crazy because of your training. How many people don't understand soldiers? I don't. It's because of their training. We are soldiers. We are in the military of heaven. If we want to be understood by everyone, then we don't understand the authority that is upon us. 
I don't care what you are going to say to me. Because of my training, I command. I speak. And the things come to pass. Hallelujah. 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 But the problem is here. You see, Jesus has defeated the devil. And the word says the devil is under his feet. But Christians, just like children, you see, we, we try to believe. We, do, we go to Jesus and say, ah, Jesus, I understand. But can you show me the devil? Lift your feet a little bit. I want to see the devil. And you see, what makes him lift his feet is the word. Our focus. So when he lifts his feet a little bit, and the devil knows, <laughs> we, we, we start to see the devil and forget to focus on the one who has lifted his feet. And we start running in all directions. We start doing things that we shouldn't be doing because we have asked what we should not ask for. Have you ever stepped on a red a red, or some of you are afraid of reds. You don't even want to see where they move. Okay, have you ever stepped on something that is, you know, that moves around? When you lift your feet, you won't find it. Unless you have stepped on it big time. So what I'm saying is, we, we don't have to look at the enemy. We don't have to know what the enemy looks like. Our focus is on the authority that we have. You see, the devil has got a place. Again, these days you like Googling. Googling maps and wanting to know where you can find. When you Google where you want to find the devil, you find him under the feet of Jesus. So if you Google the devil and find him in your house, where is your focus and my focus? Are we speaking as the Lord has asked us to speak? Are we commanding as the Lord has asked us to command. Hallelujah. You know, I, I like to look at a, a few men. Because for us to focus, there has to be change of direction. And the direction can only change when God comes through. Hallelujah. I don't know whether it's these masks that make people very quiet or it's the weather. But I, I'm enjoying myself in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, we need to know that for us to change and focus on the authority, we must have an experience like Moses. Good Moses was a shepherd, minding his father-in-law's business of shepherding. And God interrupts is shepherding. And when God interrupts his shepherding, it's not a usual interruption. He interrupts with a burning bush so that your focus can be changed. When he is interrupted by the burning bush, Moses cannot resist. His focus changes. And he looks at the burning bush and he is told, go set my people free. His focus has been moved from the ship by seeing a burning bush. And from the burning bush, he hears God. And when God speaks to him, his focus is changed. Remember Samuel, a small boy who was serving in the temple. And he sleeps like any small boy. And when he's sleeping, he hears, he's being called. And he says, are you calling me? And the priest says, no. And the second time, the third time, until the priest says, when he says, when he calls you, say, here I am, Lord. In your sleep, the Lord can interrupt your sleep to change your focus so that you can hear what he wants you to do. Remember Ezekiel, the captive in Babylon. This one is very interesting. This is the man who spoke to the dry bones. This is the man who did, you know, he is in captivity. And he thinks it's enough to be a captive. But God interrupts his captivity and says, stand up. <laughs> he wants you to, to change focus. 
So when he wants you to change focus, he wants you to do what you think you can do on your own. And when you get the attention, when he gets your attention, then you can change your focus. Remember the disciples. These ones are very interesting. These guys were businessmen. Fishing. Doing whatever they were doing. And there comes Jesus. Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. What does that have to do with my business? I have been making money. He wants to change focus. Hallelujah. God interrupts your program when he wants you to focus. God interrupts your routine when he wants you to focus. Hallelujah. But it is tragic that the church is defeated. The church that you and me serve is defeated because of our focus. So this morning I am challenging you and me to say, if we have been pruned, if we have been fed, if we have been shelved, can you really get out of the shelf the same way that you were when you were manufactured? No. Our focus changes. And what changes our focus is change of direction. Do you want things to remain the way they are? If you left Port Elizabeth University five years ago, ten years ago, you came back to Botswana, employed, now you are a boss. Can you not do the same after this training, after you are born again? You are saved for a mission. Go ye therefore and make disciples. That's what you must do. But is our focus on making disciples or becoming members of a church? Is our focus on putting on a suit on Sunday or saving souls? Is our focus on saving the lost? We need God to help us this morning. There, there are things in your life. There are things in my life that have taken us away from the focus. You see, a few days ago, I lost focus. I was on the road, driving. If you look at my car, the number plate is gone. I lost focus. I was thinking, building castles in the road. The next thing I heard, and then I, it's, it's like it was not me who did it. And then I get out of my car and go to this white lady. What are you doing? I'm sorry, madam. I'm sorry. You see, when you don't focus, we are going to have a lot of accidents. I was not focused. I am on the road. I'm driving. But my focus is somewhere else. We are in church. Our focus should be on the authority of God who says when you speak, it must happen. He says the power of life and death is in your mouth. And he says by the fruit of your lips, your belly is filled. That's his word. But our focus, uh -uh, it's on something else. It's on our intellect. It's on what we can do. It's on what uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Mazango can do for me. It's not on God. I want to challenge us this morning that whatever we see, whatever happens, the authority of Christ must become the key in your hands. The authority of Christ must become the key in your hands. When you walk towards a locked door, a challenging situation, the key is the authority of the word of Jesus. The word of God that you have, you use it to open where everybody can't open. That is the authority that we have. When we go out there, we must know that the word of God that we have is the key. Hallelujah. It is the key. But sometimes the problem is for God to make Moses see a burning bush. There was a process that he had to go through. You remember the shelving process? Could he, he was taken from where he was enjoying life to where he starts suffering. And from the suffering, he changes 
is focus. We don't want God to make us suffer to hear him. We just want to be attentive to his word. He says, out of your mouth, life and death. And in Jeremiah, he says, the word that I have put in your mouth is fire. You know fire. Kudas, I'm speaking right now, this is fire. The word I'm speaking now is fire. Not to you, but to the one who doesn't want people to know that they must focus on authority, the devil. And this same word is like a hammer that destroys everything that tries to block people from focusing. So the word of God in your hands, in my hands, is the key to understanding that when I am pruned, they will see. They will see them by their fruits. Hallelujah. The fruits of a church are to bring more lives to the kingdom. The fruits of a church that understands its calling, the church that is focused, is to change the community around them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. There are many things that interrupt us from listening to God. So, I want us to understand that when someone is focused, you know when you are focused, this authority that you have cannot be challenged. You know, I, I, was, I was with my pastor a few days ago and, and uh, our little girl, uh, Annelisa, was standing there and when I started telling her that I am a pastor, she refused. She said, that is the pastor. She, she understands her father as the pastor. So her focus will never see anybody else as a pastor. But as the children of God in this church, in this, I mean, in our, in what we believe, who do we see when the others talk about their fathers. What do you see when other people are worshipping idols? What do you see when the Antichrist is doing things in this world? What do you see when coronavirus is in the world? Do you still remember the position of your authority? As a son, your father remains seated on the throne. And the devil remains under his feet. It doesn't matter what he does. It doesn't matter the deception that he has put people through. Hallelujah. I'll ask present worship to come as I hand over to Pastor Tusa. And I pray that this morning, your focus will be on the word. The word of God that you have been given when you were saved. Let it be the key in your hands. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise.